Hey everybody, it's Greg back to here. In this video, we're going to talk about three types of flashes, speed lights, studio strobes, and what I consider to be a hybrid of the two. And I'm also going to reveal what I think is the best strobe for you if you're only going to be able to buy one strobe. So that'll be at the end of the video. Make sure you stick around for that. But let's get into the one that I use the most outdoors. So I'm going to talk about what I use each strobe for and why, and why you might want to consider those considerations as well. All right, let's get started. All right, the strobe I use the most outdoors is the Godox AD600 Pro. So here it is here. It's the AD600 Pro. They have different models, but when it comes to power, I always prefer to have more power than less, because some people say, well, what about the 400 or what about the 250? Go with the most powerful one that you can afford. You don't want to be in a situation when you're outdoors and you find out, it's not powerful enough. Now two, if you're using this outdoors, and I would avoid shooting at midday. So if you can shoot early in the morning, if you're outdoors or you know closer to sunset, that's preferable. Also shoot in the shade. It's hard to overpower the sun regardless of the power of your strobe. Now I consider this to be sort of a hybrid of a speed light and a studio strobe. And the reason for that is high speed sync and plus there's a battery attached and you can also get spare batteries. So for example, if you were shooting with a studio strobe outdoors on location, you'd probably need a battery pack. So that's an extra piece of gear. And also you're capped at your shutter speed. So what I mean is most studio strobes, you can't go beyond 200 or 250 depending on your camera and so what this allows you to do is to shoot at a higher shutter speed so you can shoot at 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 so that's really helpful when you're shooting outdoors and you want to be shooting with an open aperture without an ND filter using high speed sync that's great this is the one I would use so if you can only afford one strobe and you're shooting outdoors I would go with something like this the Godox 8600 Pro because you're gonna get enough power, and then also you have the flexibility of shooting with high-speed sync. Now, a lot of people say, well, what about modifiers? Will this speed light work, or will this uh, strobe work? Light is light, and it looks pretty much the same. So if I shot with the same modifier, let's say a 36-inch modifier with this, or with a studio strobe, or with a speed light, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And same with speed lights. If I shot with a $100 speed light versus a $600 speed light, you're still not going to be able to tell the difference. I think people get hung up on things like that. So just think about your modifier. That has the biggest effect on how your image is going to look. And now when it comes to power and versatility, that's when you have to start thinking about, well, if I'm shooting outdoors, I want to use high-speed sync, then this is the one I would go with. All right, so if I'm shooting in the studio, I use the Paul Buff Einstein E640, and I find it to be a little bit quicker and a little bit more consistent than the Godox AD600 Pro. And let me explain that. So when you're shooting, you want your flash to fire quickly and you want it to fire consistently. Otherwise, you're going to miss shots. You'll get shots that are lit well and some that are dark. And you look back and you say, well, we missed like a certain percentage of shots. I find when I use this strobe, it's very consistent. Now with the Godox, the trigger, I don't know if it's the trigger or the flash itself, but it tends to miss a few shots here and there. So if you want consistency, you want fast refresh rates, then in the studio, if that's all you're doing, then I would get something like this. Also, this is 640 watts, but you can also get it really low. So you could shoot at wide apertures with this, or you could use more power, say, if you're out on location, and it's the only strobe you have, you can get a battery pack with this. Like I said, though, you won't be able to use high-speed sync with this. So if you're shooting with this outdoors, your shutter speed is going to be capped at around 200. So you'll need an ND filter to bring down some of that light. So I've got videos about ND filters and shooting outdoors. Just search my channel and you can find those. Now the third type of flash that a lot of people use are a portable speed light like this. And like I mentioned before, whether you're using a $100 one or a $500 one, if you're using the same modifier, you're probably not going to notice a huge difference. Now how I use these are more for effects. So I'd put a colored gel on this, maybe use it as a hair light or something like that. But I don't usually take this outdoors on location and rely on it because I find a speed light, it's just not powerful enough. And two, the refresh rate of a speed light is slower than what you would get with a studio strobe or what you would get with the Godox. So I wouldn't recommend this as your only flash, but if it is your only flash, then I would put your focus on getting a modifier that really makes it look its best. So I prefer 36 inch in diameter modifiers when I'm outdoors on location. So have that kind of consideration in mind. And then when you do have the budget for something bigger, then I'd go with like a Godox 8600 Pro if you're shooting outdoors. But like I said, keep in mind, the quality of light doesn't change a whole lot, whether it's a speed light 
whether it's a studio strobe, whether it's the Godox, even if it's a more expensive pro photo, some people will probably argue with me, but the quality of light doesn't change that much. It really comes down to the type of modifier that you use. That's going to show you the biggest difference. So if you had a 22 inch beauty dish versus say a five foot modifier, you're going to see a big difference in the quality of light there. And it wouldn't matter if I used a speed light or a studio strobe or the Godox. If you'd like to improve your portrait lighting and your portrait retouching without wasting a bunch of time searching for videos on YouTube, you should check out my new training package. It's actually four courses in one. Now in the first training course, we head into the studio with a couple of different models and I walk you through several different lighting setups using different modifiers. So if you shoot with studio strobes or speed lights, you'll find this training extremely helpful. And there's also a retouching video in that training course. Now in the second training course, we head into the studio using gels in the first portion and in the second portion, we cover long exposure portraits with light painting. Now both of these techniques will really help you to spice up your images. Now in the third training course we head outdoors on location and we work with both natural light, speed lights and strobes and mixing ambient light with strobes. Now in the fourth course it's a dedicated retouching course to really help you get your retouching to the next level. To find out more about it just look down below in the description box, click on the link and check out the training. It's available for a limited time at this price, so if it sounds interesting, make sure you check it out before you go. All right, back to the video. If you're new here, my name's Craig Bechta, and every week I release a new photography video. So if you don't wanna miss those, just click on the subscribe button and hit that bell notification, and you'll get an email update when I release my weekly video. Now, if you found this video you're watching right now helpful, hit the thumbs up button, give me a thumbs up for this video. And if you have any comments or questions, you can post them down below. Now, just coming up, I'm gonna have a link to a portrait lighting playlist. Make sure you check that out too. There's a bunch of really helpful videos on portrait lighting. All right, thanks for watching this video. Check out that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.